Good evening. James wasn't wrong in what he was saying. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Kings and the Chronicles class last... How long has that been? Immediately I went into studying the Proverbs because I hated it. That's That was my New Year's resolution last year, is to do the work in the Bible that just never really, I couldn't really grasp. I couldn't get, wrap my head around it. I'd read it and then nod off and then read it some more. And you'll kind of notice as you're reading through Proverbs, it's like reading a book that you read the page before you fell asleep the last time. And it's like, wait, I just read this. And you back up and you're like, no, that's new. And then you read it forward. And then you get to the part in the middle where it's just bang, 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 proverb, 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 proverb. And you're, what, what, wait, wait, what, what? I, I barely got the last part. So I start over. So I'll start over the part, go through Proverbs again. Does get that part in it? Um, okay. It's got to be a better way for me to get through this. And then I stumbled across the sayings, the 30 sayings of the wise, starting in chapter 22, verse 17, which we're going to be doing the first 15 of tonight. And what I found is all of the things that I had been reading beforehand, but in Goldilocks style Proverbs. And what I mean by that is that the first couple of chapters is long chapters on an explanation of the Proverbs that you may go in and out of consciousness reading. And then you get to the Proverbs, bang, bang, bang. And that's, that's wait, 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 it's too much. So in the 30 sayings, you have these bite-sized Proverbs that end up categorizing the rest of Proverbs. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to fumble on this, but I got to the top of this mountain and, and it feels like I was the first person here. So I want to share that level of uh, discovery with you tonight. And I'm sure some of you may have already discovered this and went, oh yeah, I've known that for years. Well, thanks for sharing. I digress. So the introduction to Proverbs is best put within Proverbs. And that's what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks is we're going to define Proverbs within Proverbs. So we're going to come across the unrighteous. We're going to come across the fool. We're going to come across the wise and the simple. We're not going to look outside of Proverbs. We're going to act like Proverbs is the only book we have available. And inside Proverbs, you'll actually find the definitions very clear on those subjects. And then as you're reading this, I'm hoping that you're studying enough in the Bible to where you're like, wait a minute, didn't Jesus say that? Yes, absolutely he did. And then it's like getting to the top of Yosemite. You feel like you're the first person there ever saw it. Don't lose that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right, just, and fair. See, already we're coming, we've got these categories coming up, right? It's a lot. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. Sorry, let me back up one. For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young, let the wise listen and add to their learning, and the discerning get guidance. That should include every person here. So Proverbs is for everyone. Let you deal with the young part on your own. For understanding Proverbs and parables, the sayings, and the riddles of the wise. Trust me, when I'm reading that, some of it sounds like a riddle. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I remember back when I was a kid, the first set of commandments that my mother gave me is do not go outside of this yard. Do not cross that street. And then as those things expanded, the do nots kind of understand that that's kind of like the first level of instruction. So that's what the 30 sayings of Solomon have. A lot of do nots. So this is a categorical approach to studying Proverbs, like I said before. As you read these Proverbs, who, what, why, when, and how, to what degree? We want to examine these things and write them down. Put them in an Excel spreadsheet if you have to. Organize, organize, organize. It's going to help out the rest of your study. Because it doesn't really matter what I say. 
I want you to engage the gospel, right? It's, it's, there's value there. So saying one, pay attention and turn your ear to the saying of the wise. Apply to your heart what I teach. For it is pleasing when you keep in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips. So that you trust me be in the Lord. I teach you today, even you. Have I not written 30 sayings for you, sayings of counsel and knowledge, teaching you to be honest and speak the truth, so that you bring back truthful reports to whom you serve? So I'm going to fill out the first one for you. What did we just talk about? Well, listening and applying. That's the first one. But if you want to go back, let's go back. Also, not just it's not necessarily listening. It's actually, it doesn't say listen, it actually says pay attention. You'll see that a lot in Proverbs. Listen, 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 listen. Not hear it, but pay attention. And the application, you apply it so much that it becomes part of who you are and that's all you speak. You're applying it. It's on your lips. Also, what we can gather out of this is that there's value in it. There's value to this knowledge. What kind of value? What value? Start taking notes. It's a category. Value. What is the value of knowledge? Of the knowledge from God? It also touches on being honest, truth being truthful, how you treat others, and even starts getting into your associations. Right away, bang, saying one. That's a lot for a Goldilocks style, or it's a lot of information. So you can start breaking this down into categories. Let's go into the second one. Do not exploit the poor because they are poor, and do not crush the needy in the court, for the Lord will take up action in their case and will exact life for life. So, easy explanation, don't be a bully. But there's so much more. We're now, we're now talking about the justice of God. That was quick. We're in saying two, and we're already talking about God's justice. We're also talking about the injustice of man. We got a limited time, so I'm going to move quickly. Okay? Saying number three, do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. What did we just talk about? Your associations. Choosing your friends carefully. Why? Because your friends are going to make you like them. You ever heard the expression that you are the average of your four best friends? It's very true. Think in your head, who are my four best friends? You're the average of that group. I can't even be around a person who's kind of angry. Because then I'll be like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes, I'm there. I'm with you. And then you wonder, why did, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> why am I so ups- upset? Saying number four, do not be the one who shakes hands and pledge or puts up a security for debts if you lack the means to pay. Your very bed will be snatched from under you. Okay? So on the basic level, don't make promises you can't keep. But there's more, so much more. It's about honesty. Not only being honest with your person you're making the pledge to, but sometimes I'll have it. I'll get it to you, I promise. Be honest with yourself. Sometimes it's not necessarily about being honest with other people, but if you can't be honest with yourself about what you can and cannot do, or can I and cannot pay back, Who's the fool? Both of you are actually, probably. If you lack the means to pay, your very, your very bed will be snatched from under you. Sounds like we're talking about justice again. And I think at kind of the very least, we're talking about managing money, too. So here's your first foyer into money issues and Proverbs. It's 
It's an interesting one. This is one of those, go out in my front yard and stare into the abyss and think about, meditate. Do not move the ancient boundary stone set up by your ancestors. Okay, well, don't steal what belongs to others. But I was thinking, <laughs> that's what you get for thinking. What other ancient boundary stone were set up by your ancestors that people like to move? To me, this speaks to my faith. Those are my boundary stones. Don't move them. They're there for a reason. Maybe the people before you who set those boundary stones are smarter than you are. <laughs> Again, subcategory, honesty, truth, and how we treat others. I like this one. Wish I knew this earlier in my life. Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. So work at becoming skilled in your passions. But there's more. <laughs> it's only like a commercial. But wait, there's more. Being good at something will also determine who your associations are, who your associates are. So if you're not good at something, you'll serve before officials of low rank. But if you're good at something, you'll serve before kings. So who you are and how passionate you are about what you do will determine who you hang around with. You're the average of four, your four best friends. Saying number seven, when you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you're given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. It's a little bit more intense on the proverb. Do the simple. Learn to restrain yourself. But also, understand that nothing is free. And that there's people out there that will figure out what your addictions are. I know all about addictions. And then they're going to use your addictions against you. Wish that weren't true, but it is for me. So prudence. Watch out for that deceptive food. Know yourself. Know yourself if you're, if you're given to certain delicacies. Don't give in. Because people will use that against you. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust in your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches and then they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Now, if you read Proverbs, it always talks about the ant and the grasshopper and how you're supposed to get up and not owe people money. And man, that takes a lot of time and takes a lot of effort. That's a lot of sweat. And now you're telling me not to do that? Is that what you're telling me? Well, here's where the wisdom part comes in. Knowing when enough is enough. It's that balance that we're looking for. We don't want to be in debt. So is that, there is that line. So pursue wealth, but for the right reasons. And try not to talk yourself into the fact that you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, I'm working 60 hours a week because I need to feed my family. That sort of thing. When you could probably do it in 40. I'm guilty of this, that as a young husband, I would go out and thinking my only mission in life was to go make that almighty dollar because that's who I was supposed to be. And then unfortunately, I lost track of who my children were. So what was the point of it? Saying number nine, do not eat the food of a begrudging host. Do not crave his delicacies. 
for he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. Ever known somebody that way? Like, um, remember when I did you that big favor? You owe me. Avoid taking gifts that have strings. I think that's exactly what this is talking about. The owe me guy. Again, this goes back to saying number three, who you associate yourself with. Not this person. Saying number 10, it's another tough one as far as it relates to the other Proverbs. And not to mention preaching the gospel. How are we supposed to preach the gospel? <laughs> right? If you read this, do not speak to fools for they will scorn your prudent words. Ah, we have a definition. What's a fool? The one that scorns the prudent word. Oh, okay. There you go. Ta-da! Fool. That's what a fool is. One of the signs of a fool is scorning the prudent word. So you can fill that little blank in there too. So why, when, who, and how do we speak to fools? And lucky for you, that's a whole other sermon. So be careful about whom you share your valuable thoughts. Don't share something with somebody else. Don't give away something like that and expect that they're going to be like, oh, that's awesome. Or they might use it against you. We already talked about that, right? Your associations, who you associate with, what they would do, would they you know, use that against you? Saying number 11. Again, it's the second time within a short span in Proverbs. Do not move the ancient boundary stone or encroach on the fields of the fatherless. For their defender is strong, he will take up their case against you. I, didn't we just do one? I think we just did this one. Now you see what kind of the problems I was having before. It's like, wait, we just literally talked about this. So what else is this talking about? Well, this is talking about honesty, truth, going back to saying one, saying five, honesty again, and saying two, justice in a little bit different way. So all of these are connected. I'm hoping you can start seeing these categories of the Proverbs starting to pop out. Hoping. <laughs> It'll make it easier. And we just talked about that, saying one, two, and five. Going right back to saying number one. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Which probably brings me to probably the, something, one of the best Proverbs I ever heard in my life. I think probably one of my parents or one of my mentors said this to me. He says, Aaron, never miss a chance to shut up. And for a person like me who thinks out loud, I don't know if you've ever walked up when I've been pacing around and you'll come up to me and I'll be in mid, like whatever I'm doing, meditation, and you start talking to me. It doesn't, I don't even know if I hear you. I'm just kind of spouting stuff off and I'm just kind of wrapping this out in my head. I try to do that more and more to where I'm like, okay, no, so nobody hears me. I'm going to go over there so they don't think that I'm commenting about something they said. So... If I can't shut up, at least I can move out of the way. Because <laughs> if a tree falls in the woods, does it really make the sound, right? Always seek opportunities to learn and grow. Because there's nothing about speaking there. It's applying your heart to instruction and your ears to knowledge. Hmm. Saying number 13. That's a good one. Of course, they're all good. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. That's good. That's a bonus. You don't want your children to die. Punish them with a rod and save them from death. There's value to knowledge. God's knowledge. Proverbs. No death. It's a good thing. This is your way as a parent to show love for your children. Just as our Father commands are about love, 
thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, thou shalt not do that, and you all better get together on Sunday because I'm taking attendance. No, 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 no. It's an act of love. All the commandments are acts of love. God commands us to love one another. Oh, it's tough. So in the same manner, discipline your children. Go into more specifics. Don't provoke your children to wrath later. So model discipline behaviors to those whom you love. My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad indeed. My inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. So dad's going to be happy with you (laughs) if you speak wisdom. This goes right back to saying one. Your lips speak what is right. Why? Because it's on your heart. Also, this has to do with how other people react to what you say. If your heart is wise and you speak the truth, my heart rejoices in that. It's not just your father who rejoices in hearing you speak truth. Your peers, the people who have watched you grow up, your mother. It makes them happy to know that you've been listening and paying attention. Definitely makes as God's God happy. And then the last one tonight. So here's the saying, wisdom through the mouth is wisdom in the heart. Vice versa. So the last saying that we're going to cover tonight, 15 in how many minutes? That's pretty good. All right. Should have went longer. <laughs> this helped me out a lot when I was trying to control what other people were, trying, what were doing. Like when things weren't right, when they were doing it, and I would try to control that. Or gossip. This is like, don't you have anything better to do? (laughs) Do you need a hobby if you're concerned so much with that? Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. That's a very interesting way to say that. Be zealous for the fear of the Lord, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning. You want me to be zealous for the fear of the Lord. That'll take you a week to wrap your head around. So go out in your backyard, turn all the lights off, look up at the stars, and read that verse. Just me, okay. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Value. We have value. Your future hope, and your hope will not be cut off. Your confidence in the future will not be cut off. So don't waste your time envying other people's successes. There's nothing about nothing wrong with learning. I have read books on, on different men and their successes. And uh, sometimes you get to the part where, okay, this is what I had to go through to be successful. And then you go, okay, not for me. Not going to be doing that. Um, there was a time as a musician uh, where I was very, I I think on an amateur level, very successful. But then I got to the real world in California and suddenly understood what it would take to be the rock star. And I went, wait, 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 what? Um, Just fun fact. Uh, So last time I checked, it's been a while. um, Sheryl Crow, I don't know if you remember her, was the highest paid musician per CD. Guess how much she made per CD? A dollar. And she was the highest paid. As a matter of fact, most bands have to borrow money from the record companies to get all this stuff together and to, put, to, to go do a road show. And then they, da, 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 da. they could do all of that work. And at the end of the day, I'm sure you've heard a little bit of news, this musician owes the record companies, a million dollars. How did that happen? So as you are, maybe I'm envious of this happenings over there, but if you just kind of take a look, you don't want that. You don't want that. 
my son actually asked me, he says, Dad, what do you think of me becoming a musician? I said, being a musician was the hardest job I've ever had. And I've done construction. I've worked on cars. I uh, was on the emu and ostrich farm in my time, too. Hardest job I ever did was being a full-time musician. And probably without exception, the one job that took me the furthest away from my family and from my God. Don't envy sinners. It's not as cool as you might think it is. It's not, wasn't, yeah. A lot of people say, oh, wow, that was great. No. It uh, made me who I am today. I'm happy for that. But it almost ruined me. So just, this is the way I summarize the first 15. Different categories. Listen and apply. Truth, honesty, and respect for others. How you spend your time knowing yourself, who you associate with, and God is justice. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Uh, go to court. Got a ticket. You go plead your case. And the judge goes, oh, yep, the radar gun wasn't right or something happened. So you win. So it was justice good? Yeah. Let's say you lose. Was justice good? Yes. Justice is justice. How you fall on either side of that justice makes it good or not to you. Uh, Babylonians came in and just wiped everybody out. Took all the rich people, hauled them back to Babylon. Who was left? The poor. If you read Amos, they're probably going, see ya. The poor people in Israel were having a party when the Babylonians took the, took the rich people away because they got all the land back. They could finally feed themselves. So was the, the might of the Babylonian army on God's right hand of justice, was that good or bad? If you're rich, not so much. If you're poor, that's the best thing that happened to your entire life. Very, very important to understand God's justice. So I actually thought about using this as the, uh, what would you call that? Hmm. Second, second uh, Corinthians 11. I repeat, let no one take me for a fool, but if you do, then tolerate me just as you would a fool, so that I may do a little boasting. And this self-confident boasting, I'm not talking as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many are boasting in the way the world does, I too will boast. You gladly put up with fools since you are so wise. Should have started the sermon that way, huh? So I hope that you're, it kind of gets you engaged in the, into Proverbs and into the God's Word. It's really hard to get lost in it, and it's very kind of complicated and like, what are, you trying to, what are you trying to tell me? And what does that mean? And it's really hard to look at the context, especially in Proverbs. But if you, if you sit there and you look at it, and, and this is what I did. I just went over the 30 sayings, categorized everything. Everything starts to come out better. And then as people talk to me in my day-to-day -day life, they'll ask me questions. And I'll be like, that's saying number three. Well, that's saying two. That's saying 11. And then it's not me giving advice. This. So if you put this on your heart, then what comes out is truth. It works. It really works. Psalms 14. Verse first. This is the definition of a fool. So if you carry this one verse with you tonight... Wisdom and knowledge from the Lord comes from understanding that he exists. Because if you can't even accept that he exists, you're a fool. I was listening to, it wasn't a podcast, I'd say it was a podcast. There's two masters that you can serve. And uh, this person brought up uh, the Old Testament.
You can live in the comfort of Egypt under that slave master, the Pharaoh, or you can be set free, but guess what? You'll be wandering in the wilderness for a while. Freedom is tough. We're offering you ultimately the better way. We're, a- we're offering you freedom. We're not saying freedom is easy. Freedom is actually harder than slavery in that context. So the invitation tonight is the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. But if you don't even believe in him, then you are a fool. We offer invitation for not only those who are lost and want to come back, but for if you have not been baptized, then let us start that journey with you. Please, if any of this applies to you, come while together we stand and sing.